I'm born in 1970 and um, I grew up on a, on a farm. We had a good garage, angle grinder, welder, and uh, my brothers were in, they were basically into all kinds of machines, but one of my brothers and his friends, they were into motorcycles, choppers, uh, hot rods and V8s and V-twins all around at that time. And um, mom and dad was of course super busy at the farm, so basically my brother and his friend, they were my babysitters. And he also played in a rock band, so there was a lot of music. I, I basically hung out at every band practice and it was settling and Sabbath covers all the time. And uh, it wasn't like they were reading any fairy tale stories to me. They were more like translating Black Sabbath songbooks. So that was pretty damn cool. Of course, they saw that I was, you know, I really like motorcycles. And I said, well, if you want to be into bikes, there's only one kind, it's choppers. So I was like, okay, choppers. And I was, you know, checking out their magazines, uh, Easy Riders, Iron Horse, and whatever they had laying around. And okay. So I basically, like, everything that I had with wheels, I tried to build up like a chopper, starting with bicycles. And Already by that time, both, you know, my dad was super fed up with me because I wanted him to weld everything. So he, he actually taught me how to weld. I was, I don't know, like six or seven, super welds, but at least I could get two metal parts together. And um, I started extending the forks on the bicycles. And pretty soon, you know, all the kids from the neighborhood, they were on there with their bikes and I, I was just ex extending forks for, every other bi bicycle at home. So, um, but all in all, you know, it quickly accelerated into mopeds and after that, of course, motorcycles. And yeah, that was basically it, you know, growing up in the garage, fed on Zeppelin and Sabbath and uh, yeah, building choppers. So it's really interesting when you talk to people in the motorcycle scene because everyone seems to have their own Indian motorcycle story. And I guess so do I. My first encounter with an Indian motorcycle was um, my dad took me to one of his friends, uh, Sven Norby, uh, who was really into motorcycles and Indians. He had a, I think it was like a 47 or 48 Indian chief with a sidecar. And of course that classic deep Indian red and the bike just blew me away. I remember when you know we stopped and the bike was sitting outside with a sidecar and it just floored me. It was something else it was like super super special. As I grew up and really got into motorcycles and started building bikes I actually became very good friends with Sven. Me and my friends we used to visit him. We were riding our choppers but he thought that was super cool even though he was more into the stock bikes but he, he totally um, he could totally understand what we were doing and why and he loved that we were into bikes and and eventually when I got more and more into the art side and design side I remember doing this big you know pencil drawing uh, of the engine of his Indian chief I just put a lot of time into it so it and then I gave it to him I, I, I went to him and he was pretty old by then and I gave him this, this drawing and first he thought, yeah, it's super cool. You did the drawing on my chief motor. And I was like, yeah, but it's for you. And he just like choked up, got totally silent. And his eyes started, you know, almost tears in his eyes. And it was just a super emotional moment because this bike had been with me for so long in my memory. And finally I had to, I could kind of pay back to Sven. And uh, yeah, that, that story, that's, you know, that stuck really deep with me, for sure. When I was 15, I entered my first hot rod show, and that was in Stockholm. And I entered with a moped that I had built myself from scratch. Of course, a chopper, but with a lot of bear implants, like, because I was checking out Arlen S stuff, I was totally floored by his, his build. So it has a little bit of the Arlen S flavor. Um, and, you know, I, I, it took me probably a year to build that bike because I was, you know, I, I felt I was ready to graduate to something, you know, more than bicycles and kind of the, you know, the sh mopeds that I put together. So I, I put a lot of time and effort into this. When it was done, of course, you know, we live on an island. It's a hassle when you're 15 to get to Stockholm, you gotta take the ferry, you gotta, you know, organize everything. 
My dad had no interest, too busy with the farm. So, but you got a little bit of money from the show, like, a, you know, like an allowance. So I'm like, okay, well, I was held bent. I was gonna have my moped in that show. That was like, that was my goal. So back then, you know, before credit cards and everything, I, I just, I, I called a rental car place. I, I rented a pickup. I called a ferry. I booked all the tickets for me and my dad. And then I went back to that and said, look, you know, everything is organized. I got the ferry trip booked. I got the rental car so we can hold, you know, hold the moped and uh, everything is set. Now we have to go. And he was like, oh, sh well, then I guess we have to go. And, and we, we went. And um, I actually ended up winning first prize in the, in the moped chopper class. <laughs> so that was a pretty cool story, you know, for sure. And also just, you know, winning that prize. And it was the hot rod show in Stockholm. We met like all, the, all these builders that I've only read about, you know. Now that you're just 15, but totally starstruck. And to be part of that whole scene and then walk home with that first prize, it, it was just like pouring fuel on the fire, right? I was just, that was it, you know. This is what I'm gonna do the rest of my life. <laughs> And that little moped chopper is actually the only one I never sold. I still got it, still sitting at home in, in, my, in my shop. I, I kept it all these years. The only bike I never sold. Being so deeply fascinated with anything, you know, the whole American motor culture, of course, you know, what I really wanted to do as soon as I could was just go to the States, right? And by the time I was 20, me and a friend had saved up enough money so we could get on a really sh flight to New York. And from there we drove, uh, basically drove cross country. But our first target was Daytona Beach. And um, on the way there, of course, we visited any old custom shop, dealership, anything we, we could find you know, along the way. And, and uh, met all these old, old geezers and gray beards, really cool, you know, characters they all had stories to tell them we thought it was super weird that two 20 year old swedes were driving in a car and you know and mainly i mean we were looking for parts too right we filled up that car with old chopper custom parts and race parts it was pretty cool back then i remember so we went there two years i think it was like 1991. the other cool thing that happened in 91 was uh, and we just caught it by, by accident in the program. It said that Ed Kretz Sr. was going to have a little breakfast get-together at the North Turn restaurant, uh, where the old racetrack used to turn. So, yeah, we went there, and sure enough, he was there. And he was, he was pretty old by then. And there wasn't a lot of people there. I remember Arlen Ness was there. Uh, two more guys. Charlie and Paul Dioulan was also there. I didn't know them by then, they didn't know me. We figured that out like 20 or 30 years later, that we were all there at the same time listening to Ed Kretz. But, but just to be there, he, one of his race bikes were there, listening to his stories. I mean, this is Ed Kretz Sr., you know, Iron Man. And he was known as a really rough rider on the track. He was badass. And to listen to his stories and just taking it all in, like, you know, he was one of the founders of 13 Rebels Motorcycle Club. And, you know, 13 Rebels, Boost Fighters, it's basically like, you know, they were right there. Well, Hollister, 1947, like, you know, and everything that formed the basis for the Wild Ones movie with Marlon Brando. Like, he's there, we're listening to him. That was, that was pretty epic, to be, to be honest. I mean, Indians were still rare, especially like, you know, anything customized, bobbed or chopped. But once in a while, you know, there were race barbers, of course, because, you know, Daytona Beach is you know, a lot of racing, right? Old flat track and stuff. But once in a while, there was like a old barn find chop chief that rolled through the, the street and it would just, everyone would just stop in the tracks and it's like, whoa, like super badass chopper just rolling through. And of course, there was a lot of original bikes and they were absolutely beautiful and the streamlined and perfectly restored. But 
what grabbed hold of me, what really intrigued me, was the choppers and the bobbers. And um, yeah, that's, that's, that's what intrigued me. I, I've dreamt 20 years on this motorcycle. 